I dry fit this shutter back in place. And as awesome as these work, look, they're really worth the effort. I just love the way these old shutters look once they're stripped down to their bare wood. The last fun part of this is getting them to fit back together because you have to have all these holes line up as well as all your tenons. Um, I ended up making that a little bit easier by underneath these shutters is a quarter inch piece of plywood. You kind of see it there and that keeps all of this level while you're lining everything up. With a series of clamps it wasn't too bad. But I think what I'm going to do to both sets is glue the one side of the tenons into place just so that when I'm putting everything together these at least will be square and solid in place and they can't pop out. You can see over here it's already starting to separate just from applying pressure. So I'm going to have one side already ready to go and I think that will make life even easier and then I could glue both of these together. This is the door I'm using for the back and I already stripped the paint off of it. The only problem with this door is it's not wide enough by about five to six inches. So this door is just paneled b-board, tongue and groove b-board put together and they put slats on the back to hold it in place. That angle is supposed to keep it square. So I'm just going to remove all that stuff and see about adding in another piece of b-board I have in the center to get some width. Holding off on making the doors, the next thing I'm going to do is make this top section. These sides are going to be those shutters. Now this is pretty similar to the construction you see um, in a kitchen around a refrigerator. It's basically going to be these two long sides, a backer, and then two supports on top. These are going to be dadoed into place, and the backer will go rabbited into place in the back of the piece. So the backer, I showed you I have those panels, and I have enough panels for the backer, so I'm going to make this structure, get it in place, and then add the back. Since that's tongue and groove backer, it's nice. This can um, shrink and, and, and expand with relative humidity, and it won't ruin the piece. I have about 41 inches of that beadboard backer, so what I'm going to do is make my shutters 41 inches apart, which will give me 40 inches to play with with that beadboard. I could trim it down and get it to be a nice fit. So I'm um, utilizing the rabbits on the back side of these shutters. You can see these shutters have rabbits and those are there because when they close there was a receiving end with an opposite rabbit and they would uh, create a nice seal. So I'm going to keep those and those are going to be towards the back of the top of that cabinet. I'll put a receiving rabbit on the edges of two of those pieces of beadboard and this whole thing will fit into place nicely. So in order to do that I'm going to cut some pretty deep dados in the shape of a C out of the top of that C because like I said I want to deliver this in two pieces so it's easier. That bottom piece is already fairly heavy and then once it gets on site you could drop the whole thing into place and it will be a super strong super structural joint. So my shutters are about three to four inches too tall for what I needed, so I'm going to be cutting a little bit off the bottom and a little bit off the top in order to get everything the right size. I went ahead and already cut about an inch and a half all the, off the bottom, so I could use that to fit the jig I'm going to be using to cut those dados. You can see I have those bottom pieces lined up, I have that rabbit in the back, you can see now that it's on there you could see how now that it's on there, you'll see how that backer will be rabbited into place. It's going to go about 13 inches up that seat, and this is a little over an inch wide, and those are the dados I'm going to cut, and I spaced it so it's evenly spaced the back of this cabinet. And then you might be able to see it, it's lightly drawn with pencil. This is the groove I'm going to route out of the back for that backer. To cut these dados, this is the jig I'm using. It's a jig I made probably about a year and a half ago. It works great. I have a video on my channel showing you how to use this jig. The only thing that's going to be a pain is the front of this is not flat, so I might have to do some tweaking. 
but I'm going to go ahead and cut these dados. I think I'm going to get them all about an inch and a half deep, and I'm going to use a down spiral bit in my router for that. The nice thing about this jig, as you could see, is you could set the, the width perfectly to the width of your piece, and these dados will come out great. Um, I had a little trouble with the front not being square, but in the video you could probably see I just shimmed the back a little bit in order to line this up with the one line I have. So this is where the edge of that piece is going to be. I'm going to stop shy of that and then hand chisel that so I have a nice joint. Since I'm going about an inch and a half down, I'm going to do this in multiple shallow passes. I'll do this one and then the exact same thing on the one over there and then set up a fence and cut this back rabbit. That's that cut dado. I only ended up going about a little over an inch. I think that's more than deep enough. And then I just chiseled out the center, which is easy when you have a dado this deep. It, it pops right out. And test fitting that piece. It fits in there nice and snug. I'm not going to hammer it all the way in or it will be really hard to get out. So that's going to be perfect. I still um, haven't addressed the front. I think I'm not going to mess with that until it comes time to dry fit the actual shutters. So I'm going to do the other side and then do the back. For this back rabbit I just set up a straight edge and clamped it to either end of this top and I referenced off the back edge of the base plate of my router to line it up with that line and made sure it was even across the way and now I could do the same thing in the back. In the back I'm going to be making really shallow passes because there's still some hardware in here so if I start taking this off I can kind of chip away and dig out some of those nails. It started raining, so I kind of had that piece propped up in the back of my shop. Put those shutters into those dados so that I could measure the height on them and trim them to size. So once those shutters are in place, everything fits so nicely. There's not any gaps or seams, and they pretty much stay in place by themselves in those dados. So as they stand now, these shutters are 81 inches tall off of the floor, so I'm going to trim one inch off of the top of either one of them, and then I could start routing, uh, making the dados. There'll be a dado about here and a, and a rabbit at the top because there's going to be a cubby shelf at the top of this. So I have my sides cut down to the height. It's a little less than 80 inches right now, which is actually what you want, because depending on the height and the floor of where you're installing something, you do want a little bit of room for play. So before I cut the rabbit and the dado and the tops for the two shelves, I'm going to uh, finish the pieces I'm using for that. So for the middle, the bottom part of the shelf, I have this old door and I'm going to rough cut this down to the dimensions for there and then strip off the rest of this paint. So um, it's about to the width I want, I think, and it's going to end up being about 12 inches wide. So I'm going to cut it probably here and probably there just so I have to, don't have to waste time taking paint off of parts I don't need. And then for the top part of the shelf, I'm going to be using this leftover bead board that I used on the sides. And I already have stripper on that. I'm going to be stripping that down. And then the leftover bead board, I'm going to be filling in the back side of the panel.
So while I'm taking the paint off of the pieces from my shells, since I have cutoffs, I could cut the rabbit for the top and the dado for the shelf into these shutters while I'm waiting. I kind of rough marked where those are going. That will give me about a 12 inch opening in the middle here. I could go cut those dados. But me cutting those on my radial arm saw takes a little longer to do that. I have a dado stack I could put in there, but I'm just going to use the regular blade. It's already in there. So I'll have to make single passes. But on these longer pieces like this, where they would be cantilevering off of my table saw, it's just so much easier to cut them when, you, when they're stationary on a table with a fence. So I'm going to bring those over there, mark them, and probably make some stops and cut these four grooves. So I have my stop set up on my radial arm saw, so this can go right in here, and I can cut along that line I marked. And to get that line, I just use a scrap piece of what I'm going to be using for the top to get the thickness. And I could just cut these, move it over and cut them, and then use the stop for the other one as well so they're identical. And the nice thing about this radial arm saw is with the crank down here, easily raise and lower this blade. So I set it to cut. So I set it to cut the same depth as this rabbit that's already on there, which is about halfway through the piece. So I could cut these adjust my stop and then cut the other shelf. With that one you're probably going to trim into one of the shutter pieces a little bit, but that's not really a huge deal. my two cuts and on this middle dado I actually raised the blade a little bit so it didn't really cut into the shutter piece that much which means when you put your shelf in there it'll hold this in place and you won't be missing a piece and you can see I used this to measure and it fits in there nice and snug. So I'm going to use this shutter to mark the other one, this middle dado, and then these could go back in place and you're done um, making cuts on the shutters. I moved this piece outside of my shop. It was raining this weekend so I didn't have it outside. It's just easier to work on outside. I could work on the front and the back of it at the same time. I have those um, panels mounted in their dados and you can see that they're not standing totally perpendicular. They're a little bit slanted. So I have um, my shelves pretty much stripped enough that they're ready to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut those rabbits on two of my backer pieces. You can see how that rat, it's going to fit into that rabbit on the back here and just temporarily attach the two sides and that will square these up to the base and then I could put my shelves in and the nice thing about the backer being in the back is then I'll know how wide those shelves are going to be because they'll slide right up to that backer. So the two sides of that door I'm using, they, they ripped off the tongue on it so that it, it had a flat edge for the door. So I'm going to be using those two edges from the original door to cut the rabbit since they're already flat. For the two of them that I'm going to cut right now, I just have it propped up on my table saw and I'm taking one of the cutoffs I have from the, the bottom of that hinge. I'm going to line it up with the edge of my piece on how it would be mounted in that door, how it would be mounted on the piece I have, and then I could just mark the notch I need to cut out in order for this to fit into that existing rabbit. So I'm going to cut a section about this big out on both of those doors.
With those rabbits cut, I could cut my dado to final size. So I measured both of them, and I have to add about 3 16 of an inch to the edge. So I just used a ruler to elongate this straight line and mark 3 16 and I'll chisel out this square with a chisel. I just tack those two pieces in place and back just to hold up those shutters while I put the shelves in. Front, you can see how nice that corner is now. Everything fits in place. It, there's no gaps up and down here. And the nice thing about these joints is they help to hold everything in place. So I'm going to be putting the door in the middle here and then that beadboard in the top. I'm going to do the beadboard first. I took that backer off of it so now it's in pieces so I could just slice it down and put it up there. And for this, once it's in place, I measured square on the bottom, but then because this surface itself isn't perfectly flat, I made sure to get my level. I put that on there to make sure that these are uh, perpendicular to the bottom. And then up and down the back here I also measured. I measured from the front to make sure my distance is were consistent. Um, working with reclaimed materials kind of poses a whole slew of problems and that's just because this this stuff isn't square it usually doesn't have flat sides it's older it's usually a little warped and you just want to kind of triple double check to make sure that what you're working with is as square as possible off the bat. These pieces apart, that top opening is 39 and 3 quarters. So I'm just going to be trimming the edges off of all this. That opening, I think, is only 12 inches wide, and these are a little over 5. So I'll need two, and then I'll have to rip one side of one down to get it flush. First piece in place. I simply just pre-drilled a hole up top and just kind of tacked it in place. Once that's in and the other shelf is in, I could glue those two together the same way I did glue those together with these screws holding them in place because I don't have clamps long enough for this. And then once it dries, I could take those screws out and replace them with dowels. I have about an inch and a quarter left of a little piece to fill ripped one piece down, uh, cross cut one piece down to 39 and three quarters. And then I'm going to send it through my table saw at an inch and a quarter. I'm going to keep the groove so it can match up with the tongue and then the front will be flat. So I wasn't originally planning on doing anything extra to this backer. I was just going to tack it in place once the shelves were installed. But now that it's up, I think it's going to be worth the effort to put one long dado across the back that the shelf could slide into, as well as a rabbit on the top for the topper to slide into. It will just hide the seam and make this whole thing more structural. So I marked on either side where those are with a pencil, and then I could just transfer these marks to the other couple pieces that are going to go in the middle. And I'll set up my radial arm saw and cut some shallow dados and rabbits in these. So I have my shelf in place, and that shelf ended up being about 12 and a half inches deep by 39 and a half inches wide. So now I could take that shelf out, take the top off, put glue on everything, and then temporarily set it in place with screws. 
to hold it while it dries and then replace those screws with dowels.